Photography with drones is a topic that doesn't get much coverage, but I know that many of you are interested in still images. In this video I will concentrate on photography at night and in low light with the DJI Mini 4 Pro. I've already done several videos about photography with this model. You will find the link at the end of this one. Let's start with a few tips and things to know about taking photos in low light. The Mini 4 Pro is equipped with an omnidirectional obstacle detection system, but it cannot operate in low light. Due to the reduced visibility, it is not easy to spot obstacles on the screen, so for safety reasons it is suggested to be familiar with the environment. In case of an unknown location, it is better to get there earlier for some recognition flight in brighter light conditions. When taking off, make sure that the on-point is set very close to your location. It makes it easier to bring the aircraft back at the end of the shooting. Always use manual exposure, as in low light it is critical to control the exposure values, ISO and shutter speed. For best results, low light images require intensive editing, so it is better to use raw files, as they contain more information in the shadows and are not pre-processed, so they respond better to color grading. But the JPEG files in the Mini 4 Pro are excellent and can be used with good results by inexperienced users or when processing is not an option. Using automatic exposure bracketing, the Mini 4 Pro can take seven photos in rapid succession with different exposure values, with a difference of two-thirds of a stop between each image. I suggest always using this option to make sure that one of them is perfectly exposed. On certain occasions, it can be beneficial to merge the images to HDR to reduce the dynamic range, as we will see later on. To edit all the images and merge them to HDR, I've used Luminar Neo. You will find info about it in the description below, together with a coupon for a 10% discount by entering the code VICVIDEOPIC. You can watch my video about Luminar Neo by clicking on the link on the screen. The Mini 4 Pro has a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor, with a very wide aperture of f1.7 and a photo resolution of 12 megapixel with a 48 megapixel mode available. The specs are the same as the Mini 3 Pro and the wide angle lens of the Air 3. But is it the same sensor? DJI's website has never revealed the specs of the 3 model. According to several online discussions, the two new models have a stack sensor. The same is likely true for the Mini 3 Pro. Let's assume that the three models share the same sensor. The image taken with the Mini 4 Pro are very similar to the one of the wide-angle lens of the R3. They show noticeable improvements compared to the Mini 3 Pro, especially in sharpness and detail. The 48 megapixel mode has also been massively improved. This is due to a new image signal processor and an updated algorithm. Let's start with some single 12 megapixel images, taken in conditions that I consider optimal for testing the low light capability of a camera. It is half an hour after sunset, there is still the last bit of twilight and the first artificial lights. I prefer to have plenty of natural features like vegetation, the sky and the sea to check how the shadows are rendered. Many will think that this is not low light, but believe me, it was very dark. The Mi 4 Pro, with its very wide angle aperture of f1.7, can gather an extraordinary amount of light. Under these conditions, the results are excellent. with the same luminosity as the Mini 3 Pro, but with a good dose of extra sharpness and detail. I have made an article on my website where you can download these images 
to better appreciate the quality. To access the article Google Vic Video Pick Mini 4 Pro Night Photography. The only issue I noticed with the 12 megapixel images is that the area in the middle is slightly brighter and has a bit of a magenta cast compared to the rest of the photo. This issue has been discussed at length in specialized forums. It appears that the 4 Pro and the Mini 3 have a built-in lens profile which should automatically be applied to any editing software, but the 12 megapixel lens profile still needs some work. Let's compare 12 megapixel image of the same scene taken in RAW in JPEG and in 48 megapixel mode. With the JPEG images, the issue is a bit less pronounced. And the best rendition is with the 48 megapixel mode. The JPEG file have improved a lot in the last generation of DJI Prosumers line. I did not take them seriously in the past, but now they perform well right out of the box, and this is excellent news for users who don't rely on computer editing. The 48 megapixel has come a long way from the first version of the Mini 3 Pro. They used to have plenty of chromatic noise and other artifacts, especially in the shadows. This mode works by splitting the 12 megapixel of the sensor into four smaller ones, but the resulting pixels are so small they can only gather a certain amount of light, so night photography is not supposed to be a strong point. But now in several cases this mode works quite well in low light, to the point that at times I prefer the result compared to the 12 megapixel mode. I often see tests of low light photography in cityscapes taken late at night. In my opinion this situation are not good low light tests, as the challenge is rather to avoid overexposing the very bright lights while the shadows will be extremely dark, regardless of the quality of the camera. In this top-down image of a village in Sicily, the Christmas lights are very bright. The Mi 4 Pro managed to maintain some detail in the shadows, while keeping the highlights in a decent shape, although in my opinion they are borderline overexposed. In these high-dynamic range situations, it is often beneficial to merge to HDR several images taken with automatic exposure bracketing. With the merge image we have better control of the highlights and slightly more detail in the shadows. A similar example is this view of a hill overlooking the Mediterranean Sea. The resulting image has more detail in the shadows and very well balanced highlights. Click on this link to access my other videos about photography with a Mini 4 Pro. And don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video interesting. Thank you.